Hello, everyone, and welcome to our podcast. This is JB. And I'm Chandler, and this is the Unbiased Hard Take. And on today's Unbiased Hard Take, me and JB are going to react to March Madness. We have a mock draft special for you guys today. We do. But before we get there, as promised, JB, Purdue did make it past the Final Four. And we made it, JB, to the Natty. My friend, we made it to the national championship game. Somewhere we've never seen Purdue get. Let alone Matt Painter. And then we lost to UConn. 75-60. to JB, what's your thoughts on the season? I know, kind of bittersweet, obviously. But what's your thoughts on the season, my friend? What's your thoughts on the national championship? What's your thoughts on Matt Painter? What's your thoughts on all of it? We'll start with college basketball. Um, well, for starters, um, congrats to UConn again. Uh, I feel like the men and women are both dominating in both of their, uh, areas. Literally. I feel like, but Matt Painter, like I said, once, we, once it comes to like a big, great game that we need a win all that sort of stuff. Even though we went to the championship, it does not defeat the fact that there's always that one game that Matt Painter will choke on. And what did I say? He's probably going to choke one of the big games that we ever play. And it was the championship round. This was easily the biggest game Purdue's ever played in its history. Because in, and then, like I'm, I'm seeing it like at all the box scores and everything. It's like, yeah, it was a basically a Smith and Edie show for the Purdue. No one, no one showed up. Why? Oh, probably because Matt Painter was like, we're gonna give our two best players. We're gonna screen here, screen here, shoot, shoot, shoot. Zach Eady, 37 points with 10 rebounds. Brandon Smith, 12 points, 3 rebounds, 8 assists. Uh, Lawyer, 0 points. Really. Been lining up pretty good for for the rest of it, and then now she's just out of the blue. Good job, dude. Um, Jones, 5 points. Uh, Kaufman, four points. Once again, a nice big game that we probably need him to show up. And guess what? He did not do it. And then one of our bench players, uh, Hyde, only had two points. And then our defense was atrocious, except for Zach Eady. Because Zach Eady had his player to only five points. I mean, let me let me just say that five, and he's not a number one. Not, he is not a number one NFL prospect and NBA prospect. Doesn't beat me. But Newman twenty points, Spencer eleven, Castle fifteen, and Killingen eleven points, and then uh, Dira with nine and Johnson with four. So basically, all of their starters was in double digits good job painter we now you know that our defense sucks when it comes to the best of it and yes we've been demolishing teams left and right with their with our defense because we had one of the best defense in all of the ncaa march madness but yet so yeah I'm not surprised. I'm really not. Um, was it nice to see that we're the first uh, time to that we been into the championship? Yes, it was nice. But it's just that UConn is a whole lot better, and uh, that shows, and that our defense sucked. Yeah, UConn is easily the better team than Purdue. 
No, JB, you went the exact route I thought you were going to take. Now I have one question, just a simple question, real quick, before I, before I take my take. Do you think we should fire Matt Painter? Well, I said that it's a um, win a championship or get fired. And that's probably where I'm going to stand. Because now we don't have uh, Zach Eady because he's going to the, NFL, in the NBA. Um, I don't know about uh, Brandon Smith. I don't know if he's going to be in the poll. Um, but I'm pretty sure that he's... We need We need something. It's like we need the exact same caliber that we had. Where like we need like an like a dominant big man that's coming straight out of high school, that just like how Zach Keady did. Um, but if we don't have that much of a great team coming next year, no, it's it's, it's not even going to be close. I well, I want to say that Painter should be fired because I said it at the beginning. Is either bring home a championship or get fired. You did. You did. 100%. You and I'm still it. and I'm still staying with that statement. He did not bring a championship home. So he is fired. Because he had, like I said, he had all these years. But yes, he is the first coach in Purdue history to ever go into the NCAA championship in the March Madness. Since so I do get that. Yeah. I do get that. But like I said, he did not bring a national championship home. So that for being said, he's fired. No, I understand your take. And this is why this season, oh, it's ironic. It's ironic because we as Purdue fans are used to choking and being known as chokers. Oh, Purdue always loses first round. They can never get to the final four. Ha, ha, ha. They've never been championship. Ha, ha. We, we've heard it all our lives. And you know, this season, it wasn't that way. It really wasn't, JB. We have, in my opinion, in our opinion, I think we would both agree that Zach Eady is easily the number one pick in the NBA draft. Why it's debatable is absolutely beyond me because he went out there last night against UConn and scored 37 points, JB. He mm -hmm. scored 60 60 points. He scored over half of our points. If he played for UConn, they scored 75. Half of 75 is 37, JB. He would have scored half of UConn's points. Single-handedly scored half of UConn's points. And we lost. We lost. Mm -hmm. It's bittersweet because he's the best player Purdue's ever had. Glenn Robinson was great. Jay Nivey was great. Kane was winning. He was a great rest in peace. Etwan Moore, Chris Kramer, back in those days. We've had some great players, JB. Some really, really good players. Robbie Hummel, that's a great one, too. So, for him to, to be the best in Purdue history, in my opinion, that says something. Mm -hmm. Back-to-back college player of the year. If it wasn't now, it's never. That's how it is, because I don't think we'll ever have... They're going to have this same team next year. I expect us to be in the... I expect us to at least make the tournament. We'll have a good, we'll have a good team. We will because we still were expected brain Smith back. I read an article today that we do still have one of the best backcourts with Smith. Warriors had a good season. He didn't show up last night, but he's had a good season. We do have some other good players on our team, JB. We have Jones. He's expected to come back. Kaufman had some moments. So Matt Painter's always developed players. He's developed Zach Eady. He'll develop these guys. But we made one three-pointer. This was the best team we've ever had. Zach Eadies don't come around too often, players like him. And we didn't win it. We got all the way there, though. So we broke that curse, is my point. We broke the curse of being the laughing stock. Here's the thing. You're right. We didn't bring trophy home. We didn't bring it. Yeah, we got to cut the net. We got a trophy for making the Final Four. Great. Great. But for those that live in Indiana, if you're watching, you guys all well know that the Hoosiers are easily the most popular basketball team around here. And most people are Hoosier fans. There's a lot of Purdue fans there are, but the Hoosier fans are mostly dominant. And in football, you don't see Purdue fans around. You see a lot of Notre Dame. It's just what it is. It's just how it is living in Indiana. And Michigan. <clears throat> Bingo. You see a lot of Michigan. Yeah, that's a bandwagon, though. But, yeah. So you, it, it, it's like the little brother. Purdue is the little brother. 
And had we won last night, we would no longer be the little brother. Because truly, Purdue has been a... I'm going to get mad now. Because Purdue has been a much better basketball program over the last 20, 30 years under Matt Painter than Indiana has. We kick their ass every year. We're better than them every single season for a long time. A long time. Gene Cady, Matt Painter. We've been better than them forever. But it's not recognized because we have this many national championships. And we still have that many. Still have that many. UConn had four players with ten points. They were the better team. I'm not going. I'm going to congratulate them because they deserve it. Back to back, first time since that Florida team when they had Joe Kim Noah and all those great players Florida had. So this is truly the national championship game we deserved. The two best teams made it, and the best team won. We're the second best team, just like we're the most second most popular team in the state. Second place. Second place, JB. Been a great it's year. Again. This has been the most successful season for Purdue we've ever witnessed. They're never going to fire Matt Painter, though. After what he just did, I seen Purdue fans on Facebook saying such a great season. Oh, I'm so proud of our Boilers. That's all I seen was positive, positive, positive. No one talking about what we just talked about, JB. No one's talking about that part. Nope. And yeah, we did have a good year. We had another good season. We always do. But never first. What's well, never a national championship. That's what I got. He's not going to get fired. He's not. Do I see what you're saying? Yes. And logically, yes. He's never won a national. He's going to go to the Hall of Fame. I have stats here, JB. He's going to be a Hall of Fame basketball coach. Five-time regular season Big Ten champ. Two-time Big Ten tournament champ. Five-time Big Ten coach of the year. One-time coach of the year. He's a silver gold medalist for the an Olympic team. He has 15 tournament appearances and a national championship appearance and a Final Four appearance. He's not, he's not going to get fired. He's going to get an extension. And that's the frustrating part. Yeah, because for all the years that he was coach, and yes, we had a lot of uh, appearances, but guess where all those appearances left us? First round, second round, Sweet 16. Elite Eight a couple times. Elite Eight, like once or twice. But no, we never, he'd never done anything right ever since. This is his one year that he had a great season. I mean, yeah, I mean, like, like you said, you had all the records that he's had, but yet still, what, what, what is the show? See, yeah, he brought a Final Four trophy to uh the purdue college campus you know good job good job was it a championship trophy no it was not a championship trophy so you know a lot of people are probably going to say that we are too harsh how do i too harsh right too harsh that we should celebrate the season they had a good year and they really did i'm yeah we did i'm repping it i'm repping it right now i'm proud of the boilers we made it all the way we did but To be a legendary coach in a legendary organization. We're from Indiana. This is a basketball state, right? Yeah, this so, should, we should a, bring all these championships over. But yet, never had... I feel like Indi- Indiana never really had a, you know, a championship team in basketball. We have. Yeah, we have. The Hoosiers have won many times. And Indiana State's won, JB. Indiana State. Oh, yeah, I forgot. The Sycamores. They've won a national championship, but Purdue hasn't. That's my point. We're the back seat. We're the back seat. Yeah. And Tom Izzo, here's one. He has one national championship in 2000. One. He's a legendary coach. All you need is one. I'm not saying you have to win every year like Tom Brady does, or you have to win multiple. I'm not even saying that. He'll be a Hall of Fame coach. But what separates a Hall of Fame coach to a legendary coach, truly in basketball, is a national championship. Mm-hmm. And I, I'm afraid now it's never going to happen, I don't think, truly. Unless we get us another Zach Eady or something like that, I just don't see or it. Or like in, get a great scoring uh, guard or something. But yeah, it's excuse me, it's never going to happen. I mean, we, no, and, we, we might as well just not even show up for the remainder of the season until uh, Matt Painter retires. I mean, honestly, because I don't know if anybody else wants to come to Purdue. Ever since with that show that we've 
put up in the championship round, but you know. Oh, people will people will still come to Purdue, JB. He's I mean Matt Painter's developed multiple NBA players. They're going to come to Purdue. We're going to have a competitive team, but I think we'll make it. We'll make the tournament. Barely. This is the be- probably next year. I would say probably next year we'll be a lower seeded team. It's, it, this was our chance to truly, truly win. And last year was also a good chance too, but you know, I know that was the first. Uh, yeah, it's it's unfortunate, but as a Purdue fan, there's always next year, right? Always next year. Yay! All right. So with that, JB, we're gonna move on. We'll move on to our mock draft special. A lot, so much depression. Too much depression. However, though, I will say congratulations to UConn, back-to-back. Y'all truly, truly, truly deserve it. Best team. Yep. I'll give your props. Man, but, and also, like I will say, you know, congratulations to Purdue. We had an amazing season, uh, probably one of the best seasons that we've ever seen in a long, long, long time, it feels like. So, but yeah. Congratulations to Purdue for actually uh, making it to the championship round. Um, but yeah, that's all I got. And yeah, once again, Craig, congratulations, UConn. You are the dominant um, college team in probably in all of college history. So congratulations. Absolutely. Me and JB, college basketball is over. College basketball season is now over. So with that, me and JB will do our mock draft special. We will continue talking Purdue once the NBA draft ends. We start seeing our recruiting class. We'll kind of pick up there on Purdue. Um, so until some news, we'll all, we'll our mock draft special, JB. So Woo, do you have it up, my friend? I can't see. Yes. So. Yeah, yeah, this is our second annual, JB. Woo! It's our second annual. And like... We're doing something a little different than last year, than what we did last year. Um, so this is like you see on the screen that we are doing the NFL mock draft. We're gonna do. We're gonna choose all the team or all the players of all the teams. But me and Chandler are going to pick our favorite teams. So we're gonna be bouncing back and forth. Um, we are going to be only doing the first round. Um, so yeah, let's get right straight into it. And we are going to rotate me. JB will do one. I'll do one. I, we will make sure that I pick the Packers and JV picks the Steelers. We'll alternate. Hey, we're just having fun here. Mock draft. Yep. So JB's going to start us out here. The bears with the bears <laughs> that screwed me over last year with the picking of the teams, but with the first pick of the NFL draft, I do believe that the Bears are going to select Caleb Williams. Um, I mean, there is, there's no, I mean, it's, it's really no shocker there, in, in my opinion, because it's, it's going to be just all straight Caleb Williams. They're, they're not probably going to last way too much time on the clock. Once they get the call, talk to them a little bit. They're gonna. It's probably gonna be one of the shortest picks that the Bears has ever done in their history. So that's who I'm gonna have for, for the Bears to pick in round one. You know, I I, I agree 100. percent I mean, it, it, I think it, it, it's a damn near given. They're gonna draft Caleb Williams, but I I don't necessarily know if that's the right pick because I it's think not. a lot of it's not. It's, it, he's just I don't see it. I. Yes, I, I've watched tape for weeks, JB, on all of these players, and I have his report I have here. I've watched 25 minutes of film and scouting report on him, on top of what the whole season we just went through that we watched. He does have a good flick of the wrist. Um, he has an amazing arm. Um, he reads the defense well, but he's 6'1", 5'10". He's in, in, that, in that height category. That same category, he's 6'1", Bryce Young was 5'10". So he's in that shorter category. He's not very tall. There are times, like that Notre Dame game, he had three interceptions. He tries to do too much. You try to do that in the NFL against, he's going to Chicago. So 
they're not known for developing quarterbacks anyway. So you go do that against an NFL defense, JB. Yeah, go do that against Jair Alexander. Go try to do too much and create. You throwing three interceptions in a big game against Notre Dame. The red flags were everywhere. He, I'm not saying everyone's different, but mm-hmm. nail polish brands he'd been doing. He was crying in the stands with his family. He just paints his nails. It's just there's a lot of distractions. His backup quarterback, JB, won won a bowl game. Mm-hmm. His backup quarterback. I just I don't see why people think he's the all that prospect. He's not. Like, he's not. He's not. Am I? Could he be good? Yeah. Uh, do you think Patrick Mahomes would have the same success if he got drafted by the Jets or the Bears? Probably. I, it's debatable. You can you can debate it because it matters where you go. Talent around you, this, that, and the other. All these quarterbacks have talent. Mm-hmm. It's just the um, organization that um, doesn't develop the right players. Right. And there's question marks on even if he wants to go to Chicago at all. I mean, I, I agree. They take a quarterback. They traded fields. They're going to take Caleb Williams. But I'm just saying, hold the horses on Caleb Williams. There are red flags everywhere that everyone seems to be ignoring. He does have a good arm. He does read the defense well. I watch film JB, and he has he he doesn't go on his first read. He mm-hmm. actually goes read two, read three. He doesn't just settle for the checkdown. He'll he'll try to make a big play, but sometimes it results in three interceptions, mm-hmm. like it did versus Notre Dame. Can't do that in the NFL. On top of the off the field issues, his backup won a bowl game this season. Ah, uh, hold your horses. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, I mean honestly, JJ, I, I do believe JJ McCarthy is probably be the better fit for the bears than what uh caleb williams is but and then we'll like, i i feel like this is this um this quarterback room is probably one of the best rooms that we've seen in a while i'm uh, i'm i mean honestly i mean look at what last year and the year before that and the year before that like who all else has like a great a uh, great year other than Trevor Lawrence. I probably want to say Justin Herbert. Um, That's a different da- different draft class. I know. I'm saying like for different other types of draft classes. Oh, like okay. who else has like been in, in the 2000s or in the 2010, like 2010 era, 2010 on. Like who has that best draft class or a QB room? I mean, yes, there's been quite a few really great quarterbacks that's coming out, but within the later of the years, like three or four years from now, earlier on, like who else has like a great quarterback other than Trevor Lawrence? Um, The best draft class recently, in my opinion, is 2020, the COVID year, because you had, I I pulled mm -hmm. it up here to make sure I was right, Joe Burrow to uh, Justin Herbert, Jalen Hurts, and Jordan Love. Yeah. So uh, other than good. other than 20 to 20 because you, all of those players are all those quarterbacks are starters now because Jordan Love really wasn't a starter in 2020. I mean, really technically I don't think Jalen Hurts really wasn't the starter in 2020. Kind of. Uh Tua, I don't he was, I think he was the starter. Tua was a starter very early, yes. And then, like half of those half of those uh, quarterbacks really wasn't starters, and then and then th- that the same team that they had they developed uh, like Joe Burrow was also a really great one. Um, I do believe with his uh, rookie and sophomore year, I do believe Joe Burrow was the better quarterback in that whole entire draft class in that whole entire draft yeah. cl- draft room. But he just got to stay healthy. That's his <laughs> issue. He's been hurt multiple times in the NFL already. He's one injury away from exactly. But with my with my point going through, it's it's been almost four years now that we never had a great uh, quarterback room, and this is probably the second best one, in my opinion. And and in, see? in a five, six, seven year span, I do believe this is probably the second or third best uh, quarterback room. Wow. Okay. Because JB, I'll get into that here soon. Because 
I have a totally different take on this quarterback room. With that, speaking of quarterback room, we have the Washington Commanders, Commanders. JB. Are they going to take, take command this season? Or take command. Definitely going to take command. But, JB, this quarterback draft class, in my opinion, is a bit, a bit overrated. However, there is one quarterback I am high on that I'm not high on the rest. I'm not as high on Caleb Williams. I just gave you some reasons why. I'll get into J.J. McCarthy here in a bit. And, and of course, we got Bo Nix. Speaking of Bo Nix, J.B., the commanders, in my opinion, from the film I've watched, I don't look at mock drafts other people do. I watch film. I've watched film on 75 players, J.B., in the last two weeks. Okay? And the film I've watched... The second pick should be Bo Nix. Okay. Bo Nix, 61 starts against the Pac-12 and SEC teams, JB. Now, on 2020, 2022, he had a lot of screens. There was a lot of bubble passes. There was a lot of shorter stuff. He did a lot of checkdowns. But in 2023, he answered a lot of questions I had on his ability to actually fit the ball in the tight windows. He made good back shoulder throws. It can be inconsistent at times, but with coaching, you can develop that. Jordan Love was inconsistent at times. People thought that was a horrible draft pick. But Jamarcus Russell was an automatic draft pick. Remember, he was supposed to be the next best thing? Mm-hmm. So, Tom Brady, six-round draft pick. The best prospect isn't always necessarily the best player. But what I see, his experience, JB, 61 starts, 45 touchdowns. He led NCAA. Only three interceptions. He's smart. He checks the ball down. That's a knock on him. He's getting a lot of knock. That's why a lot of people have Caleb Williams and Dayton Daniels and all these other quarterbacks above Bo Nix is because he gets knocked for checking the ball down at times. You want your quarterback to make smart plays. Why do you want him? Why do you want him to throw it in double coverage? Oh, no. He completed a pass for 15 yards. Oh, no. It wasn't. What? Come on. Come on. Those, those are people looking for YouTube highlights. Yep. And with J.J. McCarthy, I have a different opinion on that. I'll get that in a little bit. Because while, yes, Bo Nix checks the ball down a lot, he also has shown the ability to make the deep throw, to fit it into coverage. He has a strong arm. He's fit it on good back shoulder fades. He's done that. He can show his ability to fit the ball into coverage. He's not just a game manager. He can do both. Bo Nix is the second pick of the draft. Yeah, and I and, and I do really like Bo Nix um, as a quarterback because he's quick. Um, he can he can scramble um, really really well. Um, so that's probably, I mean honestly, that would be a great pick for the Commanders because they do need quite a bit of people, or quite a bit of people that they really need. So I mean, for them, that'd be a great pick for them. On to the next ra- or the next draft pick, the New England Patriots. And I mean, honestly, they do need a quarterback. Um, I don't think they're not going to stick with a uh, Zappy as their starting quarterback. Uh, Everybody they- gets Zappy. And then they they had traded away um, Mac Jones, which honestly that is a good option uh, because. He sucks. So, with me picking a, I'm going to go with another quarterback once again. Um, I do believe that they're probably going to go. It's either bet- me between uh Drake or Drake May, or JJ McCarthy, but I'm probably going to pick uh Drake May. Just for the fact that he's six four, I'm having the player info right in front of me, um, so everyone else can actually see the um, the strengths that he has and everything. Um, he's six four, two twenty three. Um, he's a well built quarterback with superb mobility and a quality elite arm talent. Um, probably that's something what um, Bill Belichick. Actually, no, I forgot. Bill Belichick is not the coach. Gerard Mayo, my friend. Yep. I just remembered that. So, I mean, it's, it's a good 
uh, the Patriots are going uh, for a fresh start and everything, so that's it's, that's a good for him. Um, but he weaponizes in a high level um, anticipation and field vision with active eye manipulation. So, I mean, Drake Drake May is uh, really really great. I'm not gonna go with the in a full detail, but if for anything, y'all can pause the videos of or the pause the video and read the um, the player info that I have in front. But, but yeah, I do believe Drake May is probably the better option for the New England Patriots, even though they still need a quarterback, receiver, cornerback, um, offensive tackles, and a tight end. So, so I do believe Drake May is probably the better fit for the New England Patriots. You know, and I give a small. The only thing I worry about with that with May, yes, but. The quarterbacks, you really want them to have a decent supporting cast. New England has nothing. Mm-hmm. And they hired a defensive coach. I think whatever quarterback, if New England takes a quarterback, I actually wouldn't take a quarterback if I was New England. I would take um, anything else. They need many, many, many things. So you need to start building a roster before you give a quarterback a he's on a bust. I think whoever goes to New England, if they have a quarterback, will bust. That's my prediction. But... Maybe I, I. They definitely need a quarterback. They need a lot. They need a lot. That's it's gonna be a long road, in my opinion, for uh, England. So with that, JB, the Cardinals. I get the pleasure of doing really the first team that doesn't need a quarterback. Woo! They need weapons. Kyler Murray came back last year and showed that he is just. He's a quarterback. He's he is a starting quarterback in the NFL. He can run, he can pass, and he didn't have a lot to work with, JB. Mm-mm. He did not have a lot to work with. He needs playmakers around him. Arvin Harrison Jr. is the best prospect on my board. Personally, my board, Murph, Chandler's board. Chandler's board. I have it right here. He is the first player on my board. He's the best player in this draft. You don't need a quarterback. They have Murray. Murray with Marvin Harrison Jr., watch out. Marvin Harrison Jr. to the Cardinals, JB. Yeah, and I I do believe that is probably the probably the best pick that the Cardinals had in a in a while. Um, Marvin Harrison Jr. is probably one of the best receivers, um, in the draft cl- in in the draft class, in my opinion. Um, but on to the Chargers, another team that does not need a quarterback. They need weapons since, oh, sorry for, I actually hit my desk and everything started shaking because I'm trying to get comfortable here. Um, but tornado, tornado, but, and this carpet isn't really not that good. Anyways, since they got rid of both of, or the Chargers got rid both of their star players of uh, receivers, um, Justin Herbert is looking around like who's going to catch my ball, and they don't even have, and they don't have a running back or a, a star running back for what I know of. But I do believe they're probably going to go with a receiver. Shocker. And to me, it's either between uh, neighbors or Nabbers, Malik Nabbers. <laughs> and where is that other receiver that I... <laughs> neighbors, yes. Or uh, Brock Bowers. No, not Brock Bowers. No. Where is uh, Rome Abzun? Or what? I, however you want to pronounce his last name. He's the receiver from Washington. Okay. I'm not even going to correct that one. That was a good one. So, but to me, I'm they're probably going to pick um, Malik um, uh, Nabbers, um, in my opinion, because once again, he's six foot, um, weighs 199 pounds, um, and yeah, likes like again, um, like he's. I feel like he's a really quick and he was a great receiver. And he's in I'm reading one of the um the um 
the report on one of his and um let's see can be can, can be more consistent at attacking and or uh, proactively positioning himself on 50 50 balls so yes even though he is six foot he can still make those plays um so so to me i do believe that they're going to go with um nabbers you know, and a lot of people have him as the best receiver in this draft. I've seen a lot of that. I think that's a bunch of crap. Now, I do think Neighbors is the second best receiver in this draft from LSU. He is – he's a baller, JB, like you said. I mean, you gave a good synopsis on that. So, yeah, because they trade away Keenan Allen for a bag of chips. They don't have anyone to catch the ball. So, they yeah, they need some playmakers. Speaking of teams that need playmakers, JB, the New York Giants. Boy. Woo. Are they in rebuilding mode? In my opinion, they've lost Saquon Barkley. They don't have, they don't have anything. Mm-mm. But you know what they do have? Daniel Jones, who they gave all that money to, JB. All that money to. They need yep. to surround him. He is not a good quarterback. They, no. they need to surround him with something. <laughs> something because. There's not a lot there. No. So, JB, Brock Bowers. Brock Bowers, I think, goes to the Giants. I say Brock Bowers because he's probably the most polished tight end prospect I've seen. I mean, and they don't have a lot to work with in New York right now. Brock Bowers is better than anyone the Giants have on their roster right now. The film I have on Brock Bowers, JB, is he, he's, he's a passing threat and he can block. He can do both. He's just polished. There's not a, a lot. He they run an NFL type of. He's an NFL type of body. Mm-hmm. I think he's gonna be able to go get that big play. He's gonna be able to give Daniel Jones some 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 support because they don't have anything right now. And he's the my actually my second best player on my draft board, Brock Bowers. He's a polished player. I think he's a good start to a team that has a lot a lot to work on. I think they can get those issues. They need receiver. You can get a receiver in round two. I think Brock Bowers is just the best player on my board. So give me yeah. Oh, so Chandler is going with a complete route. What probably the New York Giants needs, but he can also be a great receiver as well. Um, on to the next pick of the NFL draft. The Tennessee Titans. To me, I do believe they're probably going to go. Probably going to, to me, they probably need, they need quite a few things. They need an offensive line, corners, a linebacker, a receiver, and a defensive tackle. But to me, I do believe this, they're going to pick this is gonna they're they're gonna be the first team to pick a defensive uh, player, and to me they're probably going to pick either um, Tyrion Arnold or Kool Aid McKinstry, but or Nate Wiggins because Nate Wiggins is also a really really good um, corner as well, but. To me, I do believe they're going to pick um, Terrian Arnold. In my opinion, he is he's five eleven. Um, he's a built cornerback with a low center of gravity and a professional lean. a high voltage, short area athlete with observed foot speed, uh, twitch, and in change of direction. Um, and he's just twenty one years old. And rapidly developed over the course of the 2023 season. So he's good on the short, but I do believe his weakness is the long speed. Um. But yeah. So I do believe that they're going to pick um Darren Arnold. First team to pick a defensive player you know i'm happy you went there jb because i mean 
the Titans have their their franchise quarterback, and, and their opinion, I suppose, with Will Weathers. They're gonna go with him. And so you're right. They got they need to shore the defense up. And yes, defense does exist in this draft. Holy crap! But not for long, because JB has the Titans going defense. And where are we at now, JB? I'm... The the Atlanta oh, Falcons. We are the, the Atlanta Falcons. Sorry, the screen is small. All right, the Atlanta Falcons. Arthur Smith, who is a friend of the Steelers now, was fired from Atlanta because the quarterback play sucked. They gave Desmond Ritter a go. They gave Taylor Heineke a go. They just were not the answers. They got plenty of talent. B. John Robinson. They have Drake London. They have Kyle Pitts. They have playmakers. They have a decent roster, JB. The defense played well at spurts last season as well. Mm -hmm. They were in it until the end of the playoff chase because they play in a crappy division. They need a quarterback. Ooh. They need a quarterback, JB. And I mean, you're you're not to me. You're not wrong because I mean, Tyler Heineke. Um, I don't even remember who's. Uh, I mean, they they keep going from quarterback to quarterback to quarterback like it was like candy. I mean, it, it was. I was like, I couldn't even. I couldn't even get a or get a straight shot of who's going to be the quarterback that year. Um, But yeah, I do agree with you there. There have no elite or star quarterback for the Atlanta Falcons. So yes, I do believe that they do need a quarterback or they need to get rid of one of their quarterbacks. um, In my opinion, to get a uh, quarterback this year in this draft. Yes. And the quarterback I have them taking here is Michael Penix Jr., JB. With Michael Penix, I think a lot's going to depend on where he goes. I would love for Drake May to follow, to fall to Atlanta. That would be a dream scenario for them. But I think more realistically, Michael Penix Jr. is. I think a lot's going to depend on where he goes. He has an injury history, JB. The last quarterback who had an injury history that I supported was Robert Griffin III. And that did not work out well in my favor. But I am not making that mistake twice. So... So he shouldn't be. He there's not some question marks. He's not the top quarterback, top two quarterback in this draft class. He's not. His potential is. I mean, mm-hmm. he makes throws anywhere. He makes NFL throws all the time, right in NFL type windows. You want to see that. But JB, he played six seasons, four seasons ended with injury. And now you're going to go to the NFL. Okay. <laughs> okay, we'll see. Can he hold up? That's the thing. Can he hold up? I yeah. think. But the potential's there. They need a quarterback, though. I think Penix Jr.'s potential and his ability to make those throws, this NFL type of throws, and his arm talent is worth is worth the pick here. Give me, give me yeah. Penix Jr. Yeah, uh, Michael, and I would say Michael Penix Jr., He's he has a cannon on him. Excuse me. He has a cannon. I'm probably going to probably say he can out-throw um, Caleb Williams, in my opinion. Um, probably, and probably some of the uh, NFL and the actually the elite NFL quarterbacks. Yes. So I mean, this arm. this dude has a cannon. He's got a bigger arm than Tua does, and Tua led the league in passing. Yep. Well, I mean, he had the two fastest uh, receivers. So, I mean, that's fair as well. But but yeah, Michael Penix Jr. If if he could hold up with his injuries. Um, but he he did have a great um, probably one of the better um, NFL com- or the combines than most of the quarterbacks that they had. Yes. Um, so I'll say with that. But on to the next pick. Who do you have Tennessee take JB so I can take him off my board? Uh, Tarion Arnold, the cornerback from Alabama. Damn it! I got notes everywhere here, guys. I'm dropping notes, everything. Okay. Okay. All right. Continue, JB. For the Bears, they got their quarterback that they all wanted and deserved, even though uh, Justin Fields, everyone said that it, that was their quarterback. And now he is a backup for the Pittsburgh Steelers. Um, so... And I'll say I'll say this: the Bears did not use him to his full potential, and I do believe the Pittsburgh Steelers it will use him at his full potential. Um, but to me, 
the Bears are going to pick, once again, another receiver or another offensive player, and it's going to be a receiver. And to me, it's probably going to be Rome Adzun. Um, he's 6'2", 212 pounds um, from Washington. Um, he was one of probably the best receivers that uh, Michael Penix Jr. had. Um, he was the probably the main target in that whole tired area. Uh, he's a swift athlete with a extremely frame who carries his mass with effortless at ease. Um, he's a versatile uh, rack weapon with high-end agility who can slither through um, contacts. But he lacks elite play strength and amidst a contact can be delayed at terms of physicality. Um, his The long speed with exponential may be a notch below the elite mark. Um, that's some of his weakness that I've just written, or read. But I do believe he is he can develop to be a, a great receiver in the league. Um, like I said, he's like I said, he's 6'2, 212 pounds. I mean, he's he's a, he's 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 built for it. So I do believe the Bears are probably gonna pick a Rome Adzun um, Abnus, whatever you have however you want to pronounce his last name. <laughs> JB throwing a wrench in the draft here, man. I see, I see your philosophy though. Okay, give Caleb Williams all the help he can get, because you have to get this one right. Mm-hmm. Jordan Love's getting ready to terrorize the Bears for a third different generation. The Bears have to get this right. So I see your philosophy of give him all the help, but they got plenty of receiver talent. So I, I like the developed strategy there, though, JB. I'll I'll give you that. But now it's time for the Jets, JB. <laughs> Oh, the most dysfunctional franchise in football. J E T S Jets Jets Jets. And with a forty-something-year-old Aaron Rodgers coming back off of a major Achilles Achilles injury, they have shored their backup quarterback spot issue up though with free agency. But they're putting all their eggs right back into the Aaron Rodgers basket. It sounds like from the reports everyone is saying and reading. So they've learned nothing. So with that, they should probably look at some offensive line help to help protect your 40-something-year-old quarterback coming off an Achilles injury because he got injured like four plays into the season last year. And their offensive line is horrible. Only Joe less Alt, than two minutes of the season. Right, literally. Joe Alt, JB, at tackle here, you need to protect your aging quarterback coming off of an injury. Joe Alt from Notre Dame is the best offensive lineman in this draft. He's good with his zone schemes. He blocks to the whistle. He's good in pass protection. That's the key right there. He's really good in pass protection. The NFL's a pass-happy league. But then old Aaron Rodgers just need to compete. The Bills are showing some weaknesses, so they need to shore up Aaron Rodgers, make sure he doesn't get hit. That's, that's Their season depends on it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's 6'8", 321 pounds. He's a yeah, big boy. elite. He's he's an elite force to be reckoned with. But yeah, great a great pick for the New York Jets. Oh, JB opinion. giving compliments out. Oh, I like to hear it. I mean, he's one of the best, probably one of the best offensive tackles in the draft. So yes. But on to uh, the next pick. I'm glad you get it. I'm glad you get to do this one. Yeah, I'm picking. I'm getting all of your conference. You can. It makes it less unbiased. See exactly. Unbiased hard take. I'll be damned. But to me, looking at the Minnesota Vikings, uh, they need um, a quarterback, a defensive tackle, an offensive guard, cornerback, and a receiver. Uh, Justin Jefferson is probably the only target that the Minnesota Vikings has. Um. And with the quarterback situation they have, um, we don't know who's the quarterback. So, to me, the, the the Vikings are probably going to pick J.J. McCarthy, in my opinion. He's 6'2", 219 pounds. He has a whip-like velocity to fit throws, pass extremely tight coverage, and 
at all ranges, a solid athlete and creator with great speed, agility, and evasive and explosiveness. Uh, just for a few things. Like I said, you guys can um, pause the video and if you guys want, you can read the ones that's on the screen right now. But on some of his weaknesses, uh, he's played at a lighter weight than his 290-pound NFL combine uh, measurement. Um, field vision and decision making can still be uh, more consistent um, benefited from his surroundings and wasn't always asked to elevate his team to me that weakness sounds almost exactly what Miss, uh, Minnesota Vikings does so with that the Minnesota Vikings are picking J.J. McCarthy I knew you were going to go there J.B. That makes me happy because here's my hard take of the day. Ready? And this is honest to God. I'm not. This is my honest opinion. JJ McCarthy to me is a third round quarterback. Now I'm not. Hey, I'm not a JJ McCarthy hater, but there's always one quarterback that rises in the draft boards magically. Yeah, he's a winner. He said it himself. He's a winner. He won the national championship. He's won in high school. A lot of players do. He played for Michigan. His running back had 27 touchdowns, JB. Mm -hmm. He played for a stacked team. Best college coach, in, played for the best college coach in the country on top of it. Yes, Minnesota, if he's going to succeed in the first round, like everyone says he's supposed to, Minnesota's the perfect place for him. He can't succeed there with Aaron Jones, Justin Jefferson, all, all them, Hawkinson, they have... Yeah, they have plenty of talent in Minnesota. If he can't succeed there, he can't anywhere. I just, he's a game manager to me. Mm -hmm. He does make good, he has good timing. I'll give him that. He he did throw, I'd seen a curl route on the film that I watched that he threw it before the receiver turned around. He does have good timing, things of that nature. He makes good decisions. But it's all check downs. He played, his stats in the national championship game, JB, the box score were embarrassing. They're a running football team. Mm -hmm. You're going to the NFL, buddy. Different ball game, different different type of boys. I think he's a game manager. He's a backup, in my opinion. That that's my hard take. Ooh. Damn, JB, uh, we got we, we're totally different on that one. Dang, I like it. I like it. I just Denver, I just I just, I just see McCarthy being, um, I mean, doing pretty well with the Minnesota Vikings because he has one of the elite receivers, um that the NFL has seen in quite a while. Um, and he does have a really great running back. So, I mean, it kind of fits. <laughs> so, it, to me, it kind of fits where he was out in Michigan. I mean, he had a few great receivers. Um, he had a great um, – a run, uh, had a, a fantastic running back. Um, I just, I just feel, and also that I do believe that they kind of lack on the offensive line and the running scheme, um, in my opinion, but they can actually develop, um, with doing that and actually going forth that route. So I do kind of see JJ McCarthy and the Minnesota Vikings kind of intertwine in some way. Okay. I like the opposite takes here, JB. I like that. All right, JB. The Denver Broncos. The Denver Broncos have a lot of needs as well. Quarterback's Ooh, a big one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Quarterback is a big one for them. Jared Stidham right now, I think, would be their quarterback if I'm work if I'm looking at this correctly. And he yep. he is not him. He is not him. So with that, uh, JB, really the only one left is Jaden Daniels. I have a first round grade on, so I'm going Jaden Daniels here. I'm not. I. I have the same concerns about Jaden Daniels I do about Michael Penix Jr. He has a skinny frame. He's he's not built like Michael Penix. Michael Penix is bulky. He's massive. Jaden Daniels is not. He's skinny. He puts himself in dangerous situations. He was he doesn't slide. He takes hard hits. With your skinny frame, you're gonna go out there and get to them boys in the NFL. I worry about injury with him a little bit with Jaden Daniels. Um, he does. Struggle a little bit to get the ball in tight windows at times, but I think Sean Payton can kind of restore that up a little bit. I mean, he does have great, great potential, great arm talent. Shows moments, inconsistent, but he has a hard time getting the ball into tight windows in college game. I worry about that in the pros, but they need a quarterback, JP. 
I think Sean Payton can work with him. I think Sean Payton's a – he fixed Russell Wilson. So I think he can get the best out of Jaden Daniels. He has the talent. I just worry about some of those things. So, But give me Jaden Daniels here. Yeah. And then I have his um, report up. Um, he's 6'3", 210 pounds. Um, one of his weaknesses is his arm strength. Uh, while solid is visibly non-elite, limiting top-end ph- uh, velocity. Um, but yeah, he's... I mean, it's, it's, it's something, but... I mean, it's the only option that... Well, he's he he's shown moments. He's shown first round talent. His thing oh, yeah. is is his consistency, and he's he's raw. He needs he needs fine tuning. But Sean Payton's the guy to do that. That he need. I think a lot. Of, like I said, a lot of these quarterbacks depends on where they go. They need they need the right fit. I yeah. think it's the case here. I think he has a decent chance with Sean Payton. Yeah, and I do agree on that. But on to the next pick. The Raiders. The Raiders. To me, well, the team needs a quarterback, offensive tackles, um, running back, cornerbacks, and a defensive tackle. And they just lost one of the the best, uh, one of the best running backs in the league, in my opinion, um, Josh Jacobs. Ah, <laughs> um, <laughs> woo boy. So. I mean, with that... Makes, makes me a happy man. I mean, with that, I do believe they are going to go with a running back this round, um, even though they do need a quarterback. Um, I do believe that the the quarterbacks they have are fine. They, they're, they're, they're fine. Um, but to me, it, it's, it's not enough because, I mean... What other quarterbacks is on on the market? Spencer Rattler, Michael Pratt, Jordan Travis, Joe Milton the third. I mean, even though that's probably probably one of the better options is Joe Milton the third. But to me, I think they're going to go with the running back this year. Um, I think they're going to go with um, Trey Benson, in my opinion, because if or Actually, no. Wait, wait a minute. Or I forgot. Um, Blake um, Corum is on the block as well. And to me, that's probably where I'm going to go with um, with this pick. Even though he will turn 24 years old in November of the of his rookie year, which honestly that re- is really. Not too concerning, but on also in the same time, it's a, it's a really concerning because the age the age of running backs that they just throw running backs out is a little concerning. I mean, Josh Jacobs is what twenty seven, twenty eight now, twenty nine. He's in his he's still in his early yeah he's mid twenties yeah he's he's in his mid twenties and he's and he's bound and. It's it's, and then you have like all these other running backs that just bouncing team to team to team and doing all this. But I do believe um, Blake Corum is probably the better option um, for the Oakland Raiders. I was gonna slap you because Blake Bo- Corum at twenty seven touchdowns. He's the best running back in the draft class. In my, yep, on, on my board at least. So. I, I, I like I, that, JB. And and to me, I totally forgot that uh, Blake Corum is was um, going for the draft this year. That is my fault. I did not notice until I basically look at the players that's in the running back uh, class, and I seen him. I was like, oh, I forgot he's there. So that is my fault. Hey. Hey, you corrected yourself. It's all good. I don't got to slap you. I like that pick. I like that pick for the Raiders, actually, because – there's been some comments from the Raiders that they not they might not necessarily draft a quarterback or go for a quarterback. Mm-hmm. Me and JB aren't doing trades here. That gets too complicated. Nope. They could trade up or whatever. Let's talk of that. But we're not doing that here. So I think that's a good pick for the board, JB. This is, just, this is all raw. 
because anything could happen. Well, and, because... and, and it makes it makes it fun because I don't know who you're going to pick, and you don't know who I'm picking. Exactly. With that, JB, we got the Saints here. The Saints have plenty of weapons. Chris Olave. They have Taysom Hill, who's a, bus, a Swiss knife at tight end. That's technically what they list him as. Alvin Kamara. They have Derek Carr. So the Saints, JB, are they have they have a good team. They but they struggle interiorly. On the defensive line, they're twentieth in the league. In the offensive line, they ranked eighteenth. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but I'm looking at it right here. But they signed Chase Young in free agency to kind of fix the defensive side of the ball, in my opinion. So with them ranking 18th on the interior line, Derek Carr had some injuries last year. He did. He had some injuries. So with that, JB, I think a good pick here is J.C. Latham from Alabama. Um, he's my second best offensive lineman on my board. He overwhelms linebackers at the second level, and he pushes big defensive linemen off the ball. He hustles. He plays hard. He plays with grit. He plays with an edge, and he bar- he buries defensive linemen. Like I said, he plays good on the second level with linebackers. He's a good pick for a Saints team here who struggled on the interior offensive line. Not a sexy pick, but a good pick, I think. Yeah, I, mean, I do agree with that pick because uh, J.C. Lantern from Alabama, he's, he is a force. Um, like like it's, with um, Joe Alt, um, he is one of probably the second best um, offensive tackles, in my opinion, in the draft. And on to the next pick, the Indianapolis Colts. You get the honor of the home state team, my friend. Yay. But the Colts do need a receiver, a cornerback, a safety, an edge, and a tight end. Um... With, with with the Colts, I really don't think they really don't need um, a receiver, in my opinion. They're they're more lacking on the defensive side of the ball, um, because you got Anthony Richardson Jr. I mean, he you can you can put him on. on well, this is a hard, really really hard take, but you could you could put him on the Panthers and he actually do some decent work with them with the receiver that they have, honestly. So. I mean, we've we seen very little of what he can do um, before he got injured, and it was phenomenal. Um, so, but to me, I really don't need, I already don't think they're not going to go with the receiver just this um, early this in the draft. But I do believe they are going to go with either a safety or a corner. And to me, they're probably going to go with a safety and either they're going to go to Cooper uh, um, Dijon. <laughs> Dang it, I love it. <laughs> or Kalen Bullock, in my opinion. Um, just for the fact that um, he's 6'2", 188 pounds. Um, has, um, Kalen Bullock has... Um, let's see, let me, it has a smooth pedal footwork when monitoring and overlapping routes and keeping leverage. And that is probably where, um, the Colts really lack on the most. Um, and he manages route spacing well in zone and has a, and has the blind spot awareness of a wall off receivers. So that really is really, really good. in in my opinion, um, that's probably what, the Colts are lacking on as well. So to me, they're probably going to pick um, Kalen Bullock, but also um, looking at Cooper's as well. He's six foot, 203 pounds, um, can quickly process attack angle, um, flotations from receivers and adjust his uh, hip leverage, um, has sharp uh, route recognition and, and Keen. An eye on the quarterback's eyes in zone and erasing the windows. Um, so yeah, I, I do believe that it's either I wouldn't be mad if they pick either Cooper or um Kalen, in my opinion. Um, but I do believe they're probably going to go with uh Kalen Bullock here on this pick. 
All right, JB. I like that. That was a sleeper pick. I had a, a late first, early second round grade on him. So, okay. I like it, JB. Now, here's one. Seattle Seahawks. We're starting to get into some teams with some winning records. The Colts, like you said, had a winning record. Missed the playoffs. So, we're getting in some better teams here. So, these teams don't necessarily need a quarterback or a lot necessarily to improve. But one thing, the Seahawks, they were horrible in pass protection last, last, last season, JB, and they lost their guard and center in free agency. They were 28th, I'm looking at it right here, 28th in the league in pass protection. They need an offensive lineman. I'm going to be the offensive lineman guy here, JB. Multiple picks in a row of that. Christian Haynes from UConn. JB, he is an absolute absolute monster. He's my best guard on my board, personally. I look here. I have my notes here. He's tough. He's relentless. He gets under the defender's skin. He's a four-year starter, so he's an experienced starter. He's matured, and he makes good second effort. He makes good second-level blocks, like I said, with the linebackers and whatnot, and he does really well in zone-heavy schemes is what I watch on the film. So for a team needing some pass protection, they lost some linemen in free agency. I think he's a good pick for them. All right, going with three offensive tackles and guards in a row. You know how you make a quarterback and your running back happy? Protect him. It ain't sexy, but Patrick Mahomes ain't very good if he's getting sacked every play. It's true. It's true. It's true. And we're going to go with the Jacksonville Jaguars. Really a team that really doesn't need that much um offense of players in my opinion even though they do have on the lack of um corners and offensive tackles and offensive guards um Trevor Lawrence has gotten sacked quite a bit um last season um I'm probably I'm probably going to go with an offensive tackle. I'm looking at this dude's first name and last name. I am not going to um, take a shot at it. Um, Yeah, um, it's it's an offensive tackle from Penn State. And I mean, you know what? I'll always fudge bad names or, or names that I can't pronounce. And I'm going to keep doing it. I can I keep saying I'm not going to say it, but I'm going to say it. I'm Lucy Wa Fashion Awu. <laughs> offensive tackle from Penn State. Uh he's probably probably top four um offensive tackles um on in this draft class. Um probably he's he's in the top ten of of the um offensive linemen in the in the draft class, in my opinion. But as for offensive tackle is um he is in top three top four so it's oh, a, it's a good 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 pick for um um for the jags if they pick him um he's height six six uh 312 pounds um he's i mean he's 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 a tank so you know i'm not even I, i'm not even gonna correct the name or laugh at it because i'm not even gonna try to say it either <laughs> I did watch a little bit of film on him also, and yes, he is one of the one of the better linemen in this draft class. But I'm not going to make fun of the name you make you botching that name today because I'm not going to try to say it either. You get a pass on that one. With that, JB, we got another team miss they missed the playoffs last season. The Cincinnati Bengals, my friend, they need some defensive help. They lost DJ Reader and they lost some other defensive pieces in free agency as well. So. I'm not going to go offensive line here, JB. Even though they but still need I, help on that. but and, and Joe Burrow does have a bit of an injury history in the NFL. So they could go offensive line here. I'm not saying that's a necessarily a horrible pick. But if I'm them, I'm taking Newton from Illinois. He, he has good instinct. I think he, ha- he has really good hands. That's a big thing in the NFL. Off the block, your hands. Mm-hmm. The offensive line in the NFL are a different level. They are a different beast in the NFL, and he reads he reads the keys and locates the ball well as well. So you're not going to get him confused on run plays and whatnot. He he has a high football IQ. 
he slips off the blocks well at the college level, so I think that'll be able to translate to the NFL game as well. I think he's a, he's a good piece for a Bengals team in the AFC looking to... In the, in the AFC, you got to beat Pat Mahomes. How do you do that? Sure your defense up. You got T. Higgins, you got... <clears throat> excuse me, you got T. Higgins, you got... You got Jamar Chase. You got Joe Burrow. He's healthy again. Sure that defense up. Yeah, and I do agree. Uh, that that defense needs a lot of help, in my opinion. But you got the Rams, JB. I do got the Rams. Um. Now we're in the playoff teams. Finally. We're in the playoff teams, and thing got a little bugged, in my opinion. What's that? Um, can't see who the team actually really needs, but I'm going to go straight off of instincts and to think of how they played last year and where they are lacking on. Um, to me, they're probably going to go with a defensive edge rusher or a defensive tackle because they just lost um, Aaron Donald. Um, so with me, it's either, I'm pretty sure they're probably going to go with probably somewhere close to his caliber. I'm um, not saying that they're going to find someone that's right on his caliber. Um, no, absolutely not. But um, I do going to say that they're going to pick um, Dallas Turner, and I'm, for some reason I cannot pick him because, oh, there we go. There we go. I finally figured it out. We're good. I can finally pick the team or see. So they do need an edge rusher, a uh, cornerback, linebacker, defensive tackle, and offensive tackle. So they really need a whole lot of defensive help. And to me, I'm probably going to draft um, Dallas Turner from Alabama. Um, he is 6'2", 247 pounds. Not as much um, a caliber with um, as what Aaron Donald is. Um, but he is really close of being in that with that edge with that edge rusher with um with um with Aaron Donald leaving. And I do believe it's either um Dallas Turner or Chop Robinson, in my opinion. Those two probably are the best um edge rushers, um, in my opinion. But I'm pretty sure they're probably going to go with either Dallas Turner. Okay. See, I'm proud of you, JB. I'm proud of that pick. Here's why. Hey, when technology doesn't go right, hey, you're still able to get it off script. And it shows we know our stuff, damn it. With that, JB, you're, go you're going to go again here. The Steelers, uh, yep. we, we, we promise. I am, so. I'm going to go again uh -huh. Um, with with my pick Um, with the Steelers. We really need a offensive line, in my opinion. Um, Even though majority of the teams that needed offensive line, in which the offensive lineman guy right next to me, um, picked <laughs> all the good ones, in my opinion. But there are some that are really good. Um, um, Talis Fuga from Oregon State. Um, he's he's really good, too. Um, he's 6'5", 324 pounds. Um, and then you got Brian Thomas Jr. from LSU. He's 6'2", 209 pounds, which honestly, I really don't see um someone going from that small um but i am pretty sure we're gonna go to talis uh fuga off the tackle from oregon state um and he's a he's a he's a probably say he's top 10 offensive tackles in the oh, yeah. in this draft class uh, with his um big body weight and but yeah I do believe he's gonna go we're gonna go with an offensive tackle or an offensive lineman first round 
excuse me, like we did last year. And it was a good fit for us, in my opinion. Um, Roddick Jones is an elite player. Um, and then we're going to go straight back to another an elite um, off the tackle. JB, you stole my pick. Because like you said, I'm the offensive line guy. And I'm not doing this on purpose, guys. This is just how the boards. JB stole a couple of my players. So, JB, I got the Miami Dolphins. Yep. The Miami Dolphins, JB, they need interior offensive line. I'm sure you can see it on the draft board right there. But yep. not even just that, because they they lost Robert Hunt in free agency. He bolted for Carolina. Connor Williams' status is currently uncertain. Yeah, they need tight end. They need corner. But I'm looking on my board right here, JB. If I'm not mistaken, Troy Fatunu from Washington is still on the board. And he yep. is a ten, he's one of the best. He's probably the best pure blocker in the draft. I'm taking him because he confident he can confidently run behind in short yarded situations. That's the thing for him. The Dolphins they need to shore. They were one of the worst pass blocking teams, one of the worst offensive line teams last year. Like I said they lost those players in free agency. They need some offensive line help. He has a good size. He overwhelms defenders. I think he's he's a good player here for Miami. And who'd you say it was? Uh, Troy. Fatanu? But yes, from Washington. Gotcha. And yes, he is still on the board. Yes. He had a 92 rank amongst ESPN. He's one of the best linemen in the... And with that, the Philadelphia Eagles. Hmm? We're almost getting there. We're almost done. Woo! Woo! We're in so, the playoff teams now, JB. Yep, we're in the playoff teams, even though the Pittsburgh Steelers was in there. Um, so we are in the defense or the playoff territory of this uh, first round of the draft. Um, with the Philadelphia Eagles, they need a corner, linebacker, safety receiver, and an edge. And to me, they're probably going to go with a uh, corner uh, because they do they did lose um, quite a bit of um of a corner. Um, and I just do see they're probably going to go with, uh, Nate Wiggins from cornerback from Clemson. He's six one. He's a tall lean cornerback with excellent efficiency of motion and disruptive range. Um, has an elite long speed to run with a vertical threats and minimizes uh, separation. Um, see, despite taller frame, has below average length, which can impact reach and press man, which that's just his weakness. With high energy motion, can at times um, be a bit uncontrolled with his footwork, uh, which that can also be, um, in my opinion, can be worked on. So, Nate Wiggins to the Philadelphia Eagles. Okay, JB. I like that one. And you know, I'm just, I'm not the offensive line guy this time. Because now, with the Minnesota Vikings, I get to do the purple incarnation of Satan, as Tom Grossi would like to say. Um, so with that, they don't need offensive help. They got plenty of offensive players. And you had them in this draft taking McCarthy. So for that case, they don't need a quarterback. They also have Sam Darnold who will probably start the season for them. Mm -hmm. They got plenty of offensive talent. They need, they play in a division with Jordan Love, who has Jaden Reed, Christian Watson, Romeo Dobb, Wicks made plays. We got plenty of good tight ends. Oh, the Bears, they got Keenan Allen. They got more at receiver. Oh, look, the Lions, they got Amara St. Brown. The Vikings need someone to guard those receivers, JB. Kool-Aid McKinstry, JB. Mm. Who I think the Minnesota Vikings need to pick here. Mm. Kool Aid McKinstry is actually the best. The best. He's he's a big name player, but he's the best corner on my draft board. JB played in the SEC, which is the toughest conference in football, in college football. He's fundamentally sound press corner who started 33 games at Alabama in the SEC. He has good length. He runs well and runs well enough to stick with receivers and locates the ball well. That's what you need to do in the NFL as a corner. He plays in the SEC, best college conference. A good pick for the Vikings here, unfortunately. Hopefully they don't stick, take them, though, because that would cause some problems for the Packers, I think. Kool-Aid McKinstry here. If I'm unbiased, JB. 
is a good fit for the Vikings. I was, um, well, to me, um, I was reading some reports um, that the Steelers was probably going to pick him up second round because most of the teams have, um, and the NFL um, prospects that does with all the mock draft and everything, has uh, Kool-Aid McKinstry in the second round. And then that's what um, the next round was going to be. I mean, that's what I've seen, but I've also read that the Steelers was um, talking to Kool-Aid McKinstry um, during his uh, pro day. And you see, I'm trying to look at a mock draft now. I really don't look at mock drafts. I watch film and I, I rate it. So he, oh yeah, as corner I seen, I see here they have him as a 23rd best player. So I'm not super far off. He's just best player on my board. Yep. Oh yeah, and I, and I do agree. I mean, he is probably one of the best um, corners. It's like this 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 draft class is probably one of the best uh, corners draft class in a while. Yes. But with the Dallas Cowboys on the clock, the Dallas Cowboys needs a off the tackle, a center, linebacker, a running back, and a defensive tackle. Um, to me, they really don't have a running back, in my opinion. Um, they did lose um, quite a few people on the offensive side. Um, but I do believe they're probably going to go with a running back on this round um, because they they um, go with quite a bit of um oh, what's the word I'm looking for they develop great running backs and this I do, I do believe uh Trey Benson is probably one of the better picks um okay. for the Dallas Cowboys um and they could probably find someone and during the offseason even though offseason started and there's no room. They they do they did absolutely nothing um for this um this um off season, even though they're they they said they're gonna go big. They're gonna they're gonna make storm in the off season. And what 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 did they um they do? Nothing. So nothing yet, in my opinion, but all the better players are off the free agency, and there's hardly anybody. So, but they're going to draft a uh, running back this um, this time around, and they're going to um, pick uh, Trey Benson, running back from okay. Florida State. I agree with that pick. They, yeah, they need to run back losing Pollard. With that, JB, I get the Packers naturally. Ah, my pick I've been waiting for, and you know. I'm going to change my opinion because when I release the Packers, I've said Pat previously on this podcast in a previous video, I don't think the Packers should go defense in this draft. You could argue they should go interior offensive line. They lost some offensive linemen, John Runyon, and free agency, whatnot. But looking at it now, truly we need we need some defensive help. We got a new defensive coordinator, Jeff Hafley. We need to give him some new toys. So with that, Cooper DeGene from Iowa... JB, he he's good in the return game too, and he's a playmaker with good instinct. He has good speed, natural hands. Um, he returned three of his five interceptions for touchdowns. But he's really good in coverage. He has a good length. He seems like the kind of player Matt will forward draft. We have plenty of good receivers. We got Josh Jacobs, AJ Dillon back. We have a good offensive line. I expect us to draft maybe a couple offensive linemen in later rounds. Of course, obviously, we always do, but. We, we need some, some corner help. Jair Alexander has an injury history, so is Eric Stokes. And we we lost a lot of our secondary and free agency. We need we need some help there. So you say you're going um, uh, Cooper, um, so Cooper Safety from Iowa? Cooper DeGene, yep, from uh, the corner from Iowa. DeGene. Yep. All right. And to me, the next pick is going to be the Buccaneers and they've lost quite a bit and during the off season um they lost their uh, linebacker um they lost quite a few of their defense um 
and I'm probably they're probably going to go with um with an edge rusher this or this um pick. Um and I do probably they're going to pick a edge rusher from the UCLA. Um um Latidu Latu. That's that's how I'm <laughs> that's how I'm doing it. Um, he's 6'4", 259 pounds. He's explosive energized or energized rusher with a controlled to offset and exploit blockers. Um and yeah, he's he's probably one of the better one of the better options that's on the board right now. Um but yeah. Um edge rusher from UCLA, that's what the <laughs> <laughs> uh, Latiru Latu. Is I'm there... proud of you, JB. Thank you. With that, JB just did the Buccaneers. I have the Cardinals. JB, like I said earlier, the Cardinals need to get some weapons around Kyler Murray. They did that in this mock draft here with Marvin Harrison Jr. So we're going to say for the sake of argument that that's what they're going to do with that as well. So with that, JB, they they need a lot of help, help a lot of places, JB. Linebacker's one of them. They were actually the Cardinals. I'm looking at this right here, JB. 32nd in the league. They're literally dead last in linebacking groups. At linebacker and corner. So you could argue either. But Peyton Wilson is still on the draft board, JB. Peyton Wilson's from NC State. He 402 tackles in his career, JB. Fastest 40-yard dash out of all linebackers at the Combine at a 4.43. He's my best line. He, he, he upped my draft. His Combine did it for me. Wait, who Darryl, was it? Cardinal. Peyton Wilson. Peyton Wilson. Uh, middle linebacker, yes, from yep. NC State. Okay. 87 grade from ESPN. He, uh, his 40, his Combine was outstanding. He's an athlete. They are last in the NFL linebacker. Literally ranked, Cardinals were. They need some help here. He's the best linebacker on my board. Yeah. And I agree. the The Cardinals does need a lot of help when it comes to um, with their defense, because um, they they did lose um, Isaiah Simmons to the Giants, um, and that was probably their one of their main people on their defensive side. And they just traded him away during midseason, um, where they kind of needed him the most. Um, now I got the. Buffalo Bills. Buffalo Bills. Buffalo Bill. Buffalo. <laughs> Buffalo. But no, they they need receivers, right? They they lost Stephon Diggs. They lost um Gabe Davis. Gabe Davis. Um, they they need all the receiver help that they can get because I don't think they're not there's not going to be a lot of um players that's in the. Um, on the during the free agents, um, I do believe they're probably going to go with uh, Brian Thomas Jr. Um, in my opinion, uh, he's six two, two hundred nine pounds. Um, he, uh, his flashes, um, existing route running, uh, uh, upside with his uh with his release, bent and vertical uh stem work. Um, he's. He's probably he he can he can I can see he can fit with the um with the um Buffalo Bills scheme and I do what, believe Brian Thomas yeah Brian Thomas yep I do believe they can he can fit in with um with their with their scheme and what they're running um with right now so with me I'm going to pick with uh, Brian Thomas Jr. I like that pick JB ah uh, yes. I get to do another rival. <laughs> oh, the Detroit Lions. Ah, another arch nemesis of mine. But, JB, I'm looking on this draft board right now. Quentin Mitchell from Toledo. Yes, it's Toledo, I understand. But he excelled during the pre-draft process. He's another one who had a really good 40-yard dash time at 4.33 at the Combine. Um... Now, there are concerns about his level of competition at Toledo. He's an athlete, JB. ESPN gave him a 92 grade. He has he competes for jump balls. He has flashes to ability to put passes out of the air from receivers. If he was doing at Alabama what he did at Toledo, he'd be a top 10 draft pick. 
best corner mm-hmm. of the draft. That's what he would be. But he did it at Toledo. But what the film tells me, what the combine told me, he had a good senior bowl as well. He's he, he's a baller. And the Lions, they struggled in pass coverage at times. And again, in a con, in a division with uh, Keenan Allen, um, Justin Jefferson, Jordan Love, and the Packers, you got to guard them receivers. So I'm taking him. I'm taking a, a Mitchell from Toledo. Yeah, and he he's a great. He's probably one of the greatest um, corners um, in this draft class right now. Um, yeah, he's a ball hawk with six interceptions and 33 pass uh, breakups over the past two years. So with that, and that that is a really um, great stat line in my opinion. Um, but when you picked your um, rival. I'm going to pick my rival. Ah, uh, the universe. Hey, we are in Indiana. The The eclipse did literally happen in our area. So, hey, the universe is balancing out. I see. Yep. It is. And with the 30th pick, um, the Baltimore Ravens. <sighs> the Baltimore Ravens. They they need, I feel like they, they need receiver help, offensive guard, edge rushers, safeties, and offensive tackles. Um, and to me, they do need a receiver. And some of them are, some of you probably are going to like, why are you going to go and go with a receiver? Well, here's the thing. The past, that last year um, with um, Lamar Jackson, um, all of his receivers had drop ball problems like Deontay Johnson with the past few years, um, drop balls, but they can catch the big plays. Um, so with me, they're probably going to go with a receiver to try to help with, um, with that. And I do believe they're probably going to go with another short receiver. And it's a speedy receiver. Um, Xavier Worthy, receiver from Texas. The combine uh, record breaker. All right, yep. JB. I, they're I like they're going to go with the record breaker this year. Um, he's 5'11". He ran 4.21, even though what I said before, um, I do believe that it was a um, the Steelers receiver that we have um i did i could show you i could probably show you a clip but they did kind of mess up on the time on one of our receivers um he did run a 4.05 um 40 um but they still kept the time going and they kind of recorded that kept recording so with that being said but xavier worthy is the record breaker and that's probably who I'm going. That's where the uh, Baltimore Ravens are going to pick. You no, know, JB. I get, this is this is crunch time for me because this is my last pick here. But Niners here. So with my last pick, JB, the 49. I've been loving them offensive linemen, JB. I say that because the 49ers. Trent Williams is great, but he's getting a little older, and the rest of their offensive linemen's kind of just, eh. You know what I mean? We don't really have a lot of guards taken in this in this draft, JB. So with that, I'm gonna pull it up here. I'm tear off the line. Sorry, excuse me. Jackson Powers Johnson from Oregon. I think because, like I said, the Niners, JB, 24th at pass blocking. Mm-hmm. Not they got a lot of issues. Like I said, they don't really necessarily need a tackle. They need to, they need to, they need to sure up that offensive lineman. They, they lost they've lost multiple close playoff games. They don't really have a lot of holes in their roster. So to be twenty fourth in pass blocking, you need you need to shore that up a little bit, especially if you're going to compete for a Super Bowl. So yeah, I think that's a, that's a good pick. Yeah, yeah, I do believe because yeah, um, Jackson Powers Johnson, he's six three, three hundred and twenty eight pounds. Um, that's probably, and he's 21 years old with a strong, dense and well leveraged frame with great mass. So like I said, he's a young, he, you can develop that young raw talent 
and he could probably be one of the best um, offensive linemen in the league. In my and probably in the league, he's probably, probably the best run blocker in the draft. He, he's mm-hmm. he's an oh, yeah. excellent run blocker. And what do the Niners like to do? Run, run the football. The Bingo. So, and then with the last pick of the NFL draft in round one, like I said, we're only doing round one. We're not going to go with uh, all the teams um, because that would be just, but that's too much. That is way too much. But the Kansas City Chiefs does need a receiver, offensive tackle, linebacker, defensive tackle, and a cornerback. And to me, they're probably going to go with a receiver on this uh, draft pick because look at the receivers that they had last year. Um, you got Rashid, um, Rashid Rice in um, in trouble uh, with the law. Um, so they they need, and then they just, I mean, they're they're, I, I feel like they're in, they were in shambles after Tyree Kill left. Um, but to me, they're probably going to go with the other um, receiver from Texas. Okay. Uh, the Aldoni Mitchell. Mitchell, yep. Okay, I like that one. I like He's that uh, 6'2", 205 um, pounds. of a mix of 4.34 speed, bend, and efficient footwork. And head fake can blend with the DBs um, with explosive uh, long strider with a burst of speed to stack defenders out of uh, stems. Um. So... He's a quick, tall, heavy receiver, and that's probably what I like to see in some in most of the receivers: um, quick, tall, and um, and big. So that's who I'm going to pick for the Kansas City Chiefs. You were absolutely correct to pick a receiver there, my friend. Yes, they won the Super Bowl, so it really doesn't matter, but Pat Mahomes had his worst statistical season regular season-wise in his career. They won the division, they won the Super Bowl, so who, truly, who cares? But, so I think you, you are, for the Super Bowl champ, that's a good pick, JB. With that, JB, we just concluded our second mock draft special, my friend. Woo! And, with that, JB, that's all we have for today's Unbiased Hard Take. Wrapped up college basketball season. Sad ending. And, of course, mock draft special, NFL mock draft. I Here's what I have, JB. Here's what I have. I'm going to go first here. These are all my notes I've compiled over the past few weeks doing mock drafts and all the craziness. I'm just going to throw the papers everywhere because it's been craziness getting ready for this mock draft. Crazy. I think we did good. Let us know in the comments down below. What do you think of our mock draft special this year? What do you think of our mock draft? Do you have any difference? What do you like? What do you dislike? Let us know in the comments down below. JB, what do you got for the people, my friend? Um, like I said, um, <sighs> horrible end for the Purdue Boilermakers, but um, hopefully we can develop somebody else and make them great and we can go back to it. But... Um, with that being said, the NFL draft is on April 25th through the 27th. So it is right around the corner, my friend, right around the corner. Um, so it's, and then what, like we, like we did last year, we will, um, do the, um, rundowns for each, um, um, rounds that we had, like we, like we did last year, we did short takes on them. Um, we're not going to go with an all details and with pro we might go in some details. We might not. Who knows? It's the future. That's right. It can always change. So, but yeah, that's all I got. Um, but yeah, don't forget to like comment and subscribe and hit that bell for the notifications. Every, every time we um, post a new video, Make sure you be the first to watch and comment down below. Who's your favorite team and who are you um, excited for um, in this uh, draft class? Um, let us know in the comments down below. Um, so, yeah, it, it will come with us. And then also like us on Facebook. Um, comment on some of our um, posts that we have. Uh, the channel over here does a fantastic job on Sports Fact of the Day. Um, and probably there can probably be a lot more um, things to come aboard. Um, in that circumstance 
um, a lot of a lot of time, a lot of consuming, and a lot of um, book um, looking up for for that sports fact. But also, there's gonna probably probably gonna be a lot more stuff. Uh, so stay tuned on that. It's a sneak peek for you guys. And my last take, I always do. College basketball's wrapped up. JB drafts getting ready to come upon us. So the times are getting a little closer. But the NBA play ends on its way. Miami lost really two close games against the Sixers and Pacers. We're probably a play-in team at this point. Not the end of the world, like I said on Facebook. But disappointing. Wanted to get a playoff spot. You don't want to have to risk being in the play-in and losing. So yep, once we were in the play-in last. The eighth seed currently. We were we were in the play-in last year. We lost our first play-in game last year. So don't freak out, Miami Heat fans. Don't panic. It's going to be okay. I promise. That's all I got. As always, go pack and go. Let's go Heat. Bowler up, baby. Still proud to be a bowler maker. And so am I. Um, but, yeah, see you all next week. And once again, let's go Heat. Let's go Purdue. Let's go Steelers. Like I said before, see you next week. See you next week.